All right, so let's work another example of a discrete time Fourier series of a signal. And again, let's go back to the inspection technique. So in this particular problem, the discrete time signal x of k that we'll be working with is going to be a sum of sines and cosines. And we'll just use our uh, trig and Euler identities to write that as a weighted combination of complex exponentials and then just kind of collect terms and be able to pick off the DTFS coefficients. So let's go ahead and work this example right here. So the signal that we're gonna be working with in this particular example is x of k equals this sum right here, that's one plus sine of two pi k over n, five cosine two pi k over n, plus a cosine term. So if you look at this, you know, this term right here is periodic with period n. This term is periodic with period n. And then this term here is actually twice the frequency of these. So it repeats twice as often. So the total um, signal x of k, if you look at that, is gonna have period n because uh, this has period n, this has two cycles for every one cycle that these terms have. So the overall signal is actually periodic with period n. That means its fundamental frequency is two pi over n. So there's a cosine of the fundamental frequency, a sine of the fundamental frequency, and then a cosine of twice the fundamental frequency sitting there. Obviously, the constant here doesn't bother us because constants are periodic with um, kind of a trivial period, right? They repeat every one sample in time. Um, so that, that part doesn't bother us at all. All right, let's go ahead and find the DTFS coefficient. So we're gonna do it again using what I call the inspection technique, which basically means just use identities to directly manipulate the original signal into a weighted combination of complex exponentials that have frequencies that are the fundamental frequency or multiples of the fundamental frequency. So let's go ahead and do that. So x of k is one plus, not really anything I can do with the one, it just stays the constant. But then sine, I can decompose as follows. Remember, sine of x is e to the jx minus e to the minus jx divided by 2j. So this is just sine of 2 pi k over n. Similarly, we know how to write down cosine. Cosine of x is e to the jx plus e to the j minus jx over 2. So I'm going to have an over 2 out front, so that turns into 5 halves. And then e to the jx plus e to the minus jx. In our case, the x is 2 pi k over n. So that is 5 cosine. And then finally, a very similar thing for this cosine. We're going to have a 1 half out front because of the um, identity. And then e to the jx plus e to the minus jx. In our case, the x is 4 pi k over n plus pi over 3. I can write like this. That's e to the jx plus e to the minus jx. So I have written my x of k as a combination of different complex exponentials. And notice I have the fundamental frequency sitting here. I have twice the fundamental frequency sitting here. The next thing we're going to do now is collect like terms to see how much of each complex exponential that I have. So let's go ahead and do that. As an example, in the summation, there are several spots where I have an e to the j 2 pi n k, right? Here's a 2 pi over n k, and here is a 2 pi over n k. This first one has a factor of 1 over 2 j, and this one has a factor of five halves. So if I combine those and factor out the common term, I'm going to have five halves plus one over two j. Similarly, there are several terms up here that have an e to the minus j two pi over n. There is one of those terms here and there's one of those terms right here. So the first one has essentially a minus one over two j, because there's a minus right here. And then this next one has five halves again. So if we combine those and factor out the common exponential, I'm gonna have five halves minus one over two j. And then what about this? E to the j four pi k over n plus pi over three. First of all, I can split that into two things. E to the j four pi k over n times e to the j pi over three. And doing that's important because then I'll be left with just a single e to the j 4 pi k over n term, 
which is a complex exponential of twice the fundamental frequency. So I can go ahead and write that like this, e to the j two times two pi over nk, right? Twice the fundamental frequency. And then the factor out front is gonna be one half e to the j pi over three. I have to account for that phase term right there. And then I'll do something very, very similar for this. Again, break it into two pieces, e to the minus j four pi k over n times e to the minus j pi over three. Then I can think of this as a negative two times my fundamental frequency, two pi over n. And then how much of that do I have? I have one half and then e to the minus j pi over three. I need to account for that phase there as well. So now look at the form I've been able to write x of k in. I've been able to write it as exponentials that are either the fundamental frequency or multiples of the fundamental frequency. All right here is the fundamental frequency. Here's a negative one times the fundamental frequency two times the fundamental frequency, minus two times the fundamental frequency. So these weights out front must be the DTFS coefficients that I'm looking for. And indeed, that's exactly the case. We can now go ahead and just write down the DTFS coefficients. So what is D0? D0 is the number that is weighting the complex exponential with zero frequency. So that's this term right here. So there's a one times e to the zero. So the DTFS coefficient d0 must be one. What is d1? Well, that is the number that is weighting the complex exponential one times the fundamental frequency. So that must be this number right here, five halves plus one over two j. Similarly, that means that this number is d of minus one because it's a negative one times the fundamental frequency. This number here must be d2 because it's the value out front of the complex exponential of twice the fundamental. And then finally, this must be d of minus two. What about all the other values, right? In general, I need n total terms because this is a periodic signal with period n. And I've only listed one, two, three, four, five values right here. So for all other values of dr that we haven't listed, you can kind of think of it as a plus zero times all the other terms. So all the other dr are zero. So that is my final answer for the DTFS coefficients that I was able to find using what I call the inspection method. All right, so that's it for this example. In the next example, we'll go ahead and work one final DTFS example. We're gonna go back to using the definition again, and we're going to find the DTFS representation of a periodic square wave. So stay tuned and watch on for that next example. Thanks for watching.